Hi, uh, welcome back to this series of uh, understanding cloud concepts from Learning Simplified. So let's first understand the concept of cloud and why this was created. So traditionally, we have seen that all the servers used to reside on premise, which means in the physical data centers of the customers, right? So the servers, the database application and uh, the security and access controls was all with the customers. Now, as time came by, there were several cloud operators which started operating and gave the customers an opportunity to outsource their operations to the cloud, which means that you can actually physically have the servers located in a cloud or in a central place and everything would be outsourced to the cloud service providers. So this is in simple words, the concept of the cloud, outsourcing your physical infrastructure. A more defined uh, uh, definition would be that the cloud is a metaphor for a global network of remote servers that operate as a single ecosystem commonly associated with the internet. But the idea is as simple as outsourcing your work. The best way to understand cloud is to have it as an analogy with Uber services. Now, why do some people, they don't prefer to own their own cars? they always prefer to avail services of Uber. So obviously the first reason is on-demand cell service. At any point of time, you can avail the service. Secondly, always you can order based on the convenience of your mobile phone. So it's available over the internet or the network. Uber services are usually pooled. So at any point of time, there is a vast resources available at your fingertips. So resources are pooled. Provides rapid elasticity. For example, today you wanted a sedan, but tomorrow you might want for your family a bigger sports car. So Uber provides you that elasticity, which even the cloud provides. In Uber, you actually know the route you're traveling at, what is your per mile or per kilometer charge. So the billing is very transparent, monitored and controlled. Same holds good for cloud as well. Finally, it is pay as you use. You don't have to pay insurance charges. You don't have to pay maintenance charges. You just have to pay for the usage of the car rental. Same for cloud as well. So it gives you a tremendous opportunity to move your capex to opex which means your capital expenditure is reduced and it's only exchanged for a much smaller operational expense so there are two models available iaas and paas so iaas is infrastructure as a service which means the service provider the cloud service provider provides you network storage and servers while as a customer, you need to bring in the operating system, the middleware database, and of course, the end application, which the customer uses. But in platform of a service, the service provider, it provides, apart from the network storage and servers, it provides even the operating system, the middleware, and the database as well. So this means the customer just has to bring in the application, which could be a core banking application, it could be a uh, customer service application and so on. So these are the key differences between IAS and PAS. Of course, there is another model known as software as a service, which is outside the purview of this video. So what are the cloud service providers? Who are they? So they are the big names are Oracle. We have Azure from Microsoft and then we have Amazon, who is the leader and uh, plenty of other small players. So let's take the example of uh, Oracle Cloud and let's see what are the terms and terminologies associated with the Oracle Cloud. Oracle Cloud has got multiple cloud regions. So regions are the actual, the physical cities where they have their infrastructure located. For example, 
Oracle has got over 25 locations running up at the moment. Some prominent cities are Phoenix, Frankfurt, Mumbai, London, and so on. So these are the regions. Now within the region, there are actual physical data centers. They are known as availability domains. So for example, Phoenix might have two availability domains or two physical data centers. One could be in North Phoenix, another could be in South Phoenix. Similarly, Frankfurt may have two or three. Mumbai might have only one. So these are the actual data centers belonging to the cloud service providers. Now within a physical um, data center, which is the availability domain, there are something known as fault domains. Now what are these? Now as you might know that the servers are usually located in racks. So every availability domain has got three racks, so as to say. Each rack has got its own cooling system, power, cabling, etc. So this means that if one fault domain goes down to a fan failure, the other two domains are up and running. So that gives you a tremendous advantage in terms of high availability. So sometimes you have one node of a rack database in one availability, uh, one fault domain and the other node on the other fault domain. So this is the tree-like hierarchy for a region availability domain at a fault domain. So let's understand the concept of compartments. So each resource in a cloud is assigned a resource ID. And all these resources are clubbed under something known as compartments. So these are logical compartments. So it's a grouping of servers under a logical name. So on the left, you might have got a compartment one, which could be probably for UAT. And on the right, you have a logical grouping of two resources for maybe a production. So why are these logical compartments are created? So for access purposes, for example, you might give your junior DBAs access to only compartment one, the senior DBAs and the uh, other professionals might be given access to compartment two for production. And also people might want to use them for billing purposes to understand and get transparency on where their usage and pricing lies. So let's understand what are the different services uh, which are offered by the cloud. Now, what do you actually need in a cloud? You require an application server and a database server. So for an application server or maybe a reporting server called the middleware, you have something known as compute services. Okay, so the terminology associated with the middleware is the compute services. And what are the options which are given to you? You have the bare metal, which means the entire server is given to you. But for cost effectiveness, sometimes the big server is divided into two parts or multiple parts known as virtualization. Using a virtualization um, software. So you have VM1 and VM2. VM1 could be given to one customer and VM2 for another customer. Virtual host is an extension of virtual machines, but in this case, both VM1 and VM2 goes to the same customer. So you avoid having noisy neighbors. And finally, four is containers or uh, dockers, uh, which we will deal with uh, in a separate session. Secondly, you have the database services, obviously the core because the data needs to be stored. Again, you have the options for bare metal, virtualization, you might go in for two virtualization in case you require a real application cluster for high availability. Then you have got Exadata. Exadata obviously is um, having a high performance Intel uh, servers which give you superior performance. And finally, the newly introduced autonomous database for uh, which gives you self patching and other benefits. The next obviously comes to mind is storage. You obviously require storage for everything which you do. So storage comes into uh, multiple flavors. You have the block storage. Block storage could be for boot volume for your operating system, or it could be block storage for persistent durable high performance. That's where your database comes into play. So your database are stored in a block. The second part is object storage, which is required for your unstructured data, like uh, videos, music, or maybe it could be for backups. So here again, there are two parts, standard, which will for fast retrieval, for example, for Hadoop, or you could have archive storage, which is much, much cheaper, but you don't be able to retrieve it so fast, which is typically used for a DB backup or an RMAN backup and so on. And finally, we have the file storage for your uh, file systems. 
The other services which comes to mind obviously are the auxiliary ones for network to connect to your on-premise data center, to connect to internet, to connect to other cloud service providers or to connect to other regions within your same own um, cloud. So set up subnets, firewall rules, etc. and to have a load balancer. Security services, very important one, which sets up access controls to the cloud. So uh, do like, share and subscribe uh, for more such uh, enlightening videos from Learning Simplified. Thank you.